Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you what decision trees are and how they work and I hope it's useful for you. So let's get started. So here is my blackboard and you must have seen pictures like um, this. So things like this. If you have seen things like this, then you have already seen decision trees. <laughs> yeah. So now this is a decision tree. It starts with one feature and uh, it goes down. So this is, there is some condition here. And if that condition is true, it follows this path. If this condition is false, it follows the path on the right hand side. So this is the convention for true, go to the left. Or false go to the right so they don't always write true or false and these nodes are known as decision nodes and the nodes in the end are known as the leaf nodes so decision and leaf so now you um, you have a decision tree like this in the beginning, you start with all the samples that you have in the in the data set. So let's say you have a binary classification problem and you have 100 classes which are in the class zero, in one of the classes and 100 samples for class one. So here, if you, if when you're just starting and some, some sample comes in, what would the probability of that belonging to class zero or class one be? Both of them will be. 0 0.5 100 by 200 and when you apply this condition you come here and now here you can have you have different number of samples right so let's say you have 80 samples that belong to class sorry 60 samples that belong to class 0 and you have 10 samples that belong to class 1 and here for the false condition, this is 50, let's say 50, 10. So here you have 60, so here it should be 40. And uh, here it was 100. So this will be 50 samples. And um, this will be 90. So total of 200 samples. So this is class zero, this is class one, this is class zero, this is class one, this is class zero, this is class one. Okay, right. So now here, if the condition is true, the probability of one, class one is 10 by 60. So one by six. And probability of zero is 50 by 60, five by six. Here, it's the same. So it will be 50 by 90 plus 50, 140, 55 by 14, and 90 by 140, 9 by 14. So as we go down, uh, our chances uh, like to, to get a zero uh, class or one class will improve. So maybe at this point, you don't have, uh, you have, you have only zeros let's say you have five zeros and no ones let's say at this leaf it's like this so now if you have something like this it's called pure sample okay so all all the samples in a given uh, node belong to one class so it's the impure there is no impurity here you have some impurity here you have some impurity but for this impurity is zero okay so now there are two different ways to measure impurity there are many ways to measure impurity we are going to learn about two of them so one is called Gini and it is defined as summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 and here you have pi into 1 minus 
vi where n is the number of classes and pi is the probability of ith class okay and if you have only two classes this will be p0 into 1 minus p0 plus p1 into 1 minus p1 now p1 for a two class problem p1 is 1 minus p0 so just replace it so p0 1 minus p0 plus 1 minus p0 and 1 minus 1 plus p0 so this will become 2 p0 1 minus p0 okay so this is something that you have to remember this is only for binary classification problem if you are calculating these value by hand but we will use python to calculate them uh, the next thing uh, something else that you can use it's called entropy information gain and it is defined as um, summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 p of i so this remains the same as before as Gini and here you have a log of pi so that's the only difference and we add a negative sign because this value is negative and we try to minimize it so when whenever we are building our trees we are starting from here and we are building new nodes to reduce the impurity so we always add a new node when whenever it reduces impurity now what is the basic building block of a decision tree it is this so you have one node and true and false so this is the basic building block so if you want and if you want to add another node you will add here or you will add here but the basic building block is going to remain the same okay now how Gini and entropy are calculated let's uh, see that with a python with some python example script so here i have imported math and i will define a function called Gini that takes samples not defined but just step and the first thing that we do is we calculate the sum of samples so samples underscore sum equal to sum of samples so this is very basic python we initialize the Gini score which is initialized from zero and list of probabilities probas equal to empty list and we go through each sample so we say for sample in samples probas um, proba equal to the current probability of probability of current sample will be sample divided by sample sum sample sum and probas dot append proba so once we have that we can write for proba in probas update the score so score plus equal to proba multiplied by 1 minus proba so now this in the end he will return the score the return score so now this is same as Gini that we wrote in the summation form before and sam samples are the number of samples belonging to class 0 class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 and so on so let's say you have um, you, you have a problem with three different classes and class 0 has 100 samples class 2 has uh, 75 samples sorry class 1 has 75 samples and class 2 has 125 samples so class 0 class 1 and class 2 have 175 and 125 respectively 
So as you can calculate Gini of samples. So it starts from 100 and 100, 100 divided by the sum of this, um, multiplied by 1 minus 100 divided by sum of this, plus 75 divided by sum of this, minus, sorry, multiplied by 1 minus 75 divided by sum of this. So it goes on. Uh, but now we have written a sim simple function to calculate Gini for us and it gives us 0 0.652 great um, so like if, if we do some we, we can have any number of samples we can have 424 and 290 and this gives you 0 0.482 uh, so let's go back to this one and let's say here I don't have any samples in class 1 and uh, the score is 0.493 because here it's still very difficult to identify which class the sample the new sample should belong to this one has 100 this one has 125 let's say this one has 5 and you see the Gini reduces to 0 0.09 and let's say it's 0 then Gini is 0 and if I copy this whole thing and add it here and um, do math.log proba and here I add if proba greater than 0 then this will be entropy and here I can also calculate entropy and entropy will also be 0 and if I have again I have 75 and 125 I get some negative entropy which is very high um, so I will just add minus 1 into score here and then I have a positive entropy so I my job is to minimize it find the lowest entropy possible for the next node or for the current node so like for the building blocks of decision tree now we will start building our own decision tree but we need some data for it so um, let me import pandas and if you don't know about pandas it's fine uh, I'm just using it to show you the data we will be doing calculations by hand anyways so data is pd.read underscore csv and here we have um, input slash titanic and train.csv so this is a very well known data set called titanic and if you look at the data there is a survived column there is a passenger class column name sex age and some some other stuff pair uh, cabin things like that so now what what uh, we are going to do today is we're going to look at only two columns we're going to look at p class and sex and also survived because that's the target variable but the thing that i'm going to teach you today you can apply it to any kind of data and uh, you it will be visible it will be pretty much visible when when we start applying what we learn uh, so data is data and sure you have survived and p class and so now when i look at the data i have sex as male and female so let's create some kind of mapping call it sex mapping and map female to 0 and male to 1 and data dot sex will be data dot sex dot map sex underscore mapping now if I look at the data I have survived I have p class and I have sex but I still don't know how many values are there in p class so I can just do data dot uh, p class dot value underscore counts and it, it will give me there are three different values one two and three so yeah three different levels so it's this is also categorical this is also categorical um, and uh, now you can you can either start your tree with p class or with sex because you have only two columns right so decision trees are nothing but bunch of if else statements and that's what you have to remember so um, going back to our blackboard 
now you see like you have um, these values here p class one two three so we can, we can just write p class is categorical values one comma two comma three and sex is also categorical values zero comma one so these are arranged in the increasing order um, right so these are unique values arranged in increasing order and let's say we had another variable called age so now okay let's look, look at age later so now when we are building a tree uh, what can we say we can say um, e class equal to equal to one and then we write p class equal to equal to one and p class equal to equal to two and so on but this is very time consuming so what we are going to do is we are going to treat these as numbers and we say p class um, is one two and three so i divide it here 1.5 and i divide it here 2.5 okay so now similarly uh, sex can also be divided here only 0 0.5 and if you had age age continuous numbers so or uh, so so you can just do like uh, arrange them in order increasing order 5 10 um 18 32 and so on and you take the average 10 plus 5 by 2 10 plus 18 by 2 and 10 plus 32 by 2 so why are we doing this we are doing this to create the first condition so since we have only these two features we can create the first node the first decision node here uh, by using only these two features so what what can those nodes say so they can say p class less than equal to 1.5 so this can be one of the nodes another one can be p class less than equal to 2.5 this can be another one and sex less than equal to 0 0.5 so now, now you see, so since we are not dealing with categorical variables anymore, we have converted everything to numbers, we deal with numbers, we don't have to create a lot of conditions. It's very simple condition. So less than 1.5 should cover all samples. So that's what you have to think whenever you are in a node, uh, it should cover all the samples that is present before that. So here we are starting with all the samples in the data set. So it, less than equal to 1.5 should cover all the samples less than equal to 2.5 covers all the samples sex less than equal to 0 0.5 covers all the samples why because you have true and false here so true and false true and false and true and false okay <clears throat> so now now you have to uh, in the beginning you can also calculate Gini score so Gini score in the beginning for all these three will be the same so let me just draw a line here and uh, when we go back to our notebook um, what, what would be the Gini score in the beginning so we can just do data dot survive dot value underscore counts and this gives us how many samples belong to class one, how many samples belong to class zero. And if I have to calculate Gini, so you can also do entropy. Uh, I'm just continuing with Gini today. 549. So you have to choose one. Choose one function that reduces the impurity or that the function that you check if if impurity has reduced or not. So that's all you have to do. So if you have heard of neural networks, there is a loss function. So we minimize the loss function and that's what we are doing here. But here you can have all kinds of loss. Uh, 549 and this is 342. So this gives me a score of 0 0.473. Um, and I can just write it on the blackboard 0 0.473. 
and this is same for this this or this so we start with score of Gini score of uh, 0.473 so this is our Gini impurity so now when we go to P class less than or equal to 1.5 uh, we have to do the same thing again right so data what we can do is we, we, we can filter the data we can say data data dot P class less than or equal to 1.5 so this this gives me all the samples with p class less than 1.5 which is p class equal to 1 and then i do survived dot value counts so i have a condition now p class less than 1.5 so it's give, going to give me uh so, so so see like there are only 216 samples which have p class less than 1.5 so it's going to give me now um the value counts so i can also like uh, uh write a uh, print um so so let's say this is x something and print x dot shape and i will print two things so that makes our job easier and print x dot survive dot value counts okay so now, uh, why did I print X or shape? It gives me the number of samples. Okay, so um, now we have 216 samples, 80 of them belong to class zero and 136 belong to class one. So let's go back to our blackboard and just write this stuff down. So N zero, uh, so there is a way of writing this. I will first show you this thing. So N zero is 80. It, 80 samples belong to class 0 and n1 is 136 and the sum is uh, 216 so it's mostly represented as 80 comma 136 so you can calculate the sum 80 plus 136 and you you can also calculate the probabilities so now if a sample if a sample comes here and it has p class less than or equal to 1.5 the probability of survival is 136 divided by 216 and probably probability of not surviving is 80 divided by 216 get it now it's it's becoming much easier and then you also have the false condition right so let's go back to our python notebook and see the false condition so false condition you, you don't let me just copy this and we will make two conditions so this one will be for true and this one will be for false. So false condition greater than 1.5. So here you have 675 samples and uh, 206 in class one. So class zero has 459 and class one has 206. And total number of samples is 675. Just add them. Uh, now if I have to calculate, uh, so we also forgot one thing here, we have to calculate Gini. So Gini will be uh, class 0 and then class 1. So 80, 136. So these are my samples. Gini for the previous one is 0 0.466. And Gini for the new one will be Gini. And here we have to write 469 0 0.424 and when we when you calculate them write them in uh, in the in, in your notebook so this is the first one second one and third one so here the Gini is g equal to and there's g equal to 0 0.466 0 0.424 Okay, similarly, we have to find these numbers for P class less than or equal to 2.5. So we will go back. P class less than equal to 2.5 and P class greater than 2.5. So here it will give me some values. And now 177, this is 177 and this is 223 and greater than 2.5 and this is uh sorry did i do it right 177 
three one seven seven two two three four hundred samples and this is four ninety one samples and this is three seven two and one one nine so you can calculate it by hand we made a function makes it easier for us and now we write all these numbers down in the notebook so here we have um, 177 comma so 177 in class 0 comma uh, 223 223 223 223 so this is 400 samples and this is 491 samples uh, and the score here came out to be 0 0.493 and score uh, here this was uh, 372 comma 119 and the score was 0 0.367 so this this uh, Gini came out to be lower okay uh, now the next step um, so so like for any condition you can calculate what is the chance of survival if this condition is false uh, and it's uh, you you get one sample you have to just look at this condition and predict chance of survival. It's 119 divided by 491. Okay, now we go to the third condition that is possible and that's sex less than 0 0.5. So sex less than 0 0.5. And we calculate. Oh, sorry, yeah, here we have to write sex and that's less than 0 0.5. So it's 81 and 233, a total of 314 samples, which are female. Actually, less than 0 0.5 is 0, so 0 was female class. And here we do sex greater than 0 0.5. And here we write 468 and 10. Awesome. So let's write these numbers in our tree. Uh, what, what did we have here? We had less than 0 0.5. We had 314 samples and uh, 81 comma 233. So if you're if you're a female, your chances of survival are quite high. 233 divided by 314. And the second one we had, uh, so the Gini for this 0 0.383 uh, and in the second one we have 577 samples and here uh, the values are 468 comma 109 and impurity is 0 0.306. So you see this impurity of this is much less than this one. So now looking at these three, we can say probably it's better to use sex less than or equal to 0 0.5 as a starting point as a first decision. So still now we haven't even made the first node of the decision tree. So, uh, but our intu that's our intuition. So it's often calculated by numbers. So what do we, what we do is we calculate weighted average for this Gini and this Gini and weighted average will be 0 0.466 multiplied by the number of samples here 216 um, plus 0 0.424 0 0.424 uh, multiplied by the number of samples here 675 675 divided by 216 plus 675 so this will be the score for um, this tree this building block and if we use this node the score will be uh, 0 0.493 multiplied by 400 plus uh, 0 0.367 multiplied by 491 divided by 400 plus 491 and here it will be 0 0.383 multiplied by 314 plus 
0 0.306 multiplied by 577 divided by 314 plus 577 okay so when you calculate them you get the value 0 0.437 0 0.424 and 0 0.338 so this is called weighted Gini so I used a simple simple stuff in Python to calculate them so uh, this is called weighted Gini and now since this has the lowest score sex less than or equal to 0 0.5 becomes our starting point so we start with sex less than 0 0.5 so we write sex less than or equal to 0 0.5 and then uh, we don't always write true false we we'll just assume like left hand side true right hand side false and here we had 81 to 33 and we will just write the number of samples 81 comma 233 and here we have 48 109 48 comma 109 and Gini uh, 383 306 so let's just write it here 0 0.383 0 0.306 so this is our Gini score number of samples in class 0, number of samples in class 1, number of samples in class 0, number of samples in class 1 if sex is less than or equal to 0 0.5 if if this is true then the chances of survival are 233 divided by 233 plus 81 if sex is uh, sex less than 0 0.5 is false, if sex is male chances of survival are 109 divided by is it 109 or something else 468 so this is not 48 468 109 divided by 468 plus 109 uh, okay so the first step is done but the first step step is done now now what you can do is you can also add uh, another node here and another node here now which node should you add here the, the choices that we have are very less since we started with we have only two features we can either add um, uh, p class less than equal to 1.5 or p class less than equal to 2.5 these are the two choices that we have and these two choices can be added here or here or both so now we see uh, we will see one one more step so here we can add p class um, so let's say we are adding for here we are checking for uh, this point here so we have p class less than or equal to 1.5 this is one of the conditions and the second condition that we have so let's ignore this one first for now and here we can add p class less than or equal to 2.5 so uh, the, the if sex is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is true you can have this one or this one so you have to choose one of them so let's choose one of them and to choose one of them we go back to our python code and uh, we write here if my sex is less than 0 0.5 and uh, data dot p class um, is less than equal to 1.5 so now this is my new condition uh, because i'm looking at sex less than 0 0.5 equal to true so i will just copy this one here and now this will give me the greater than condition so let's see what it gives me so it gives me 94 samples so now i'm left only with 94 samples 91 in and survived and three not survived so now i'm getting probably getting good results so here I can write 3 and this will be 91. Okay, so let's run this 0 0.06, very less Gini, quite good. And this one will be 78 and 142. Okay, 0 0.45 Gini. So now uh, let's write these down in our blackboard. So we have a P class, so again, two, true and false. So P class less than or equal to 1.5. If sex is less than or equal to 0 0.5, uh, we have Gini 0 
number of samples is uh, 0.061, number of samples is 94, and uh, we have 3, 91. 3 in class 0, 91 in class 1. And here we have number of samples is 220. And here we have 78, 142. Gini is 0 0.46, 0 0.457, 0 0.46. So now we calculate the weighted average. Weighted average will be 0 0.061 multiplied by 94 plus 0 0.46 multiplied by two multiplied by 220 divided by 220 plus 94 okay and this will come out to be what i don't know so 61 p2 is 46 this is 94 and 220 this comes out to be 0 0.340 and we write it down 0 0.340 and now we go to the next one so the next one says if sex is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is true and uh, the next node you go to is p class less than or equal to 2.5 so p class less than or equal to 2.5 uh, we go back to our python code and here we say this is 2.5 and this is 2.5 and we calculate the values again um, okay so now uh, we get 170 and 3 uh, and let's let's write these values down so we get uh, 173 samples so true and false and here you have 170 samples and on the other side you have uh, 144 samples and now, now you have to remember that this condition that we have here uh, is satisfied when x is less than or equal to 0 0.5 so we are still on this side so 170 144 the division is uh, 9 comma 161 9 samples in class 0 161 in class 1 here you have 72 comma 72 so here the probability of survival is 50 percent and uh, let's calculate the Gini values so 161 9 and 161 so this is 0 0.1 and for the other one you have uh, it should be 0 0.5 because it's 72 72 equal mm, 72 and it is 0 0.5 so here i've calculated this uh, gini 72 72 and gini 9 161 so 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 so now this the weighted average becomes 0 0.1 multiplied by 170 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 144 divided by 170 plus 144 so this is our weighted average and let's calculate uh, this value here so 0 0.1 0 0.5 170 144 and this gives us a value of uh, 0 0.283 so now since this value is much lower than this one we will be selecting p class less than or equal to 2.5 as the next node if sex is less than or equal to 0 0.5 so let me draw it from the top so now let's draw the full uh, decision tree that we have till now sex less than or equal to 0 0.5 um, and here we have true and here we have false and this one had gini of 306 and 468 i think 468 comma 109 now i remember the values um and here we have 383 so 0 0.383 and here we have the values 81 233 81 no survival 233 survival so these are just counts and now we created another node here and that was 
B class less than or equal to 2.5. So this one is chosen. And when this one is chosen, you have 170, 144. Sorry, uh, true and false. And you have uh, Gini scores 0 0.1, 0 0.5. So 0 0.1, quite low, 0 0.5, random. And 9161. 9 comma 161 samples and 72 comma 72 samples so now we have built this much of the zoom tree and, and it took a lot of time and now what you can do is you can also look at the false condition and try to evaluate what uh, is the next node that you can add here so you have to go through all the features. We have only presented two features uh, in this example, but you have to go through all of the features. So here you can do one less than equal to 1.5, P less than equal to 2.5. So that's all we have. But if there are more, go through all the features. It can be age. It can be uh, cabin class. I don't know. And go through all of them, uh, do the same calculation as we did, calculate the weighted Gini and choose the one with the lowest weighted Gini and add it here The next for the next node in false. So now when we look at P class less than equal to 2.5, can we add a node here? Given the example that we have, we have only two features, sex and P class, P class less than equal to 2.5 is false. So you cannot add another P class here. So this is our one of our leaves. If you come here, your probability of survival is just 50% man. So, but here you can add another one and that will be P class less than equal to 1.5. So now this is the only option we have left that we can add here and this will be true false and these will also be leaf nodes. So this, these three will be leaf nodes, but we didn't finish on the false side. So on the false side, you have to do the same process and uh, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you. So um, now what we can we can also do is we can check uh, if we did it correctly. So we can use scikit-learn and decision trees. Let's go back to our notebook and let's import a few things. So from sklearn.tree import decision tree classifier which is the best implementation of decision tree available and plot tree, which is going to plot the tree for me. And I will also import matplotlib by plot. Um, to plot uh, the, the tree. And here now let's go towards the end and then here I can write features. So what are the features that we have? We have features uh, sex and we have feature P class. Okay, these are the two features that we had. Um, and uh, now I can init my model. So if I don't specify uh, any arguments here, uh, everything is default and by default it uses Gini, which is good for us. The so model.fit uh, data features and your target variable is data dot survived dot values or data dot survived just data dot survived is enough and we create a figure with a fig size so that you can see uh, what it's displaying 20 comma 10 um, and we plot we call the plot tree function on model and it has feature names which is same as features and we do plt.show to show the plot. Okay, so now this is going to print me the decision tree the way we created the decision tree. And now we can compare a few things. So the first first one here, it says Gini equal to 0 0.473. And we go to our backboard and we see that we don't have 473, but we do. So we do have 473. Uh, let me change the color of the pen. And uh, here you see 473. So this was the initial Gini when when you were calculating on the full data set. And that's why what they have written here, 549, three, 549 samples in class 0, 342 samples in class 1. So this is where you're starting. And the first condition that they have chosen is sex less than or equal to 0 0.5. And that's the condition that we chose. 
Now we move to the, uh, so when, when we chose sex less than or equal to 0 0.5, uh, we had true and false. And the values that we had were uh, 0 0.383 and 0 0.306. So now we check here and the values are 0 0.383 and 0 0.306. 81, 233, 468, 109. 81, 233, 468, 109. So we are correct. And then, then we evaluated P class less than or equal to 1.5, P class less than or equal to 2.5 for the true condition of sex less than or equal to 0 0.5. And we chose P class less than or equal to 2.5. So this was our final uh, tree and they have also chosen p class less than or equal to 2.5 so they write it in the same block so don't get confused but they also continue with the false and yeah and that's what we should do we didn't continue with the false uh, but the idea remains the same so you can do it on your own and you can just verify the results so p class less than or equal to 2.5 and here they had uh, gini 0 0.5 and gini 0 0.1 and i remember this one but i can show you Gini 0 0.5 and Gini 0 0.1, 9, 161 and 72, 72. So if I go back, 9, 161, 72, 72. And I also mentioned that we have one more option of doing P class less than equal to 1.5 here. And that's what they have also done. But after that, uh, they have, they're left with uh, um, leaf nodes. And uh, these three are leaf nodes. This is leaf node. This is leaf node. This is leaf node. So they, you also continue on the false side and that's what you are left with. So one thing you have to remember is you do, probably don't need to evaluate all the feature. You don't need to um, make your tree very deep all the time. If you do that, that's okay, but that's going to overfit on your training data. So what happens is like, let's say you have the depth of the tree and you have some kind of uh, error you're trying to find accuracy or some kind of error that you want to minimize on the training samples. So now you have divided your data into uh, two data sets. One is the training data and one is the validation data. So this is your, uh, this is how it's going to look like for your training data. If you keep uh, making the tree deep, uh, but your validation data will probably at some point look like this. So your error on the validation set will increase by a lot and so you have to select the optimal depth or optimal leaves or optimal nodes so it, it totally depends on you you can also stop building the tree when um, the gini doesn't improve by 0 0.1 let's say so you can have conditions like this um so yeah after this uh, it just starts overfitting so don't care about it one more thing that people ask is how to use decision tree. So we have now learned it for classification, how to use it for regression. And it's very simple and very easy. So you see, we are looking at two functions, either Gini or entropy for classification. You can look at square loss for regression. And in classification, you have, um, we represent in brackets, the number of classes in class zero, 100, 75, 125 if it is a three class problem and instead of this the conditions will remain the same right the conditions are going to be the same but instead of this you have a list of values x1 x2 x3 so on x in the list of values and when you choose the value you choose the mean so you say i i, I don't give the probability of class zero but i just return the mean values so you're square laws will will take care of it and based on that uh, you can create the splits and so you use the decision tree in the same way for regression too you can so you can use any kind of um, function any kind of loss function as you do in neural networks um, if you're familiar with it the only thing is here you can use any function you want um, so that, that's it for decision trees. I hope uh, it was useful. I hope it was understandable. I tried my, my best. And if you like it, do click on the like button, do subscribe, do tell your friends about it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section and I will try my best to respond.
Thank you very much and goodbye.